Okay, here I am all fresh and showered. Uh, in this case, I've chosen a t-shirt that doesn't have any labeling on it. And I'm wearing gray sweatpants. At one point, one of my friends says, your choice is to believe in paranoia or pronoia. Paranoia, everyone knows what that is. Pronoia is the opposite of paranoia. It's the belief that the universe is out to do you good. Life review is what you're told is what happens to you when you die in the body and you go to some other place and there's beings that have got films of your body and films of other people you interacted with on your time on Earth. And you review these things. So they always say, well, we won't judge you. We're just going to supply you with the tape and perhaps um, some different kind of people that will be there that will ask you questions about what you felt here and what do you think it was like for the other person that you were interacting with. I've got green bubbly water, bubbly, and they want to show you Bly on the end, B-L-Y, because it reminds them of Captain Bly, B-L-I-G-H, played by Humphrey Go Gobart. Humphrey Bogart in the movie about Christian Fletcher, was it? Was that another one, a mutiny? Mutiny on the Bounty. They love to drop words into my head. Who are they? Uh, they are the fat controllers that Stuart Wilde talks about. The fat controllers. They will not be in higher dimensions. They're lower dimensional entities, if you can call them anything other than nasties. They also say we're acting nasty, but they do it every day. So is it really an act? At what point does the actor become that what is that which is acted? They like to go, hmm, as if they really care about my response. They don't care. They keep saying, you as a spot of awareness, I usually point up here, the awareness faculty up here. It's mostly everything goes on around you and you watch it in your meditation. Memo to self, the whole simulation that you're in is being done in a hell world. So, I mean, how do you have pronoia in a hell world? Well, you just have hope that you're going to get out of the hell world. I'm not going to tell you that they want me to tell you about a certain commentator. That's because the words that come, just come. That's why they say it's like you're in a pre-recorded movie. You came, you sat down in the movie and you put on your 3D glasses and it's a movie that uh, maybe they hook up your body to the movie. So you experience the movie through your body. But the whole movie is pre-recorded and, you know, it's basically when you came into the movie theater, you went over to the computer and you picked from a pick list of what movies you were ready to experience and you paid them the money. And then you came and sat in, they hooked you up. And even in the middle of the movie where you're given to feel like, I don't like this movie, I want out. They say, I'm sorry, it's not available. You must continue along with the movie. When does the movie end? Uh, Steve Perry of Journey says the movie never ends. Who created this? Some other type. Some other type. Some other karyotype. Karyotype is when you look through a microscope at the chromosomes to determine how many chromosomes there are. You can't tell if they're damaged or not. You can see if they're there. 
because they're pretty much too small to see if they're damaged. You have to have some other kind of instrument to tell if there's damage in the chromosome. But you can count the chromosomes and you can see the shape of them. And the shape of the chromosomes is the karyotype. What's the point of the karyotype? Karyotype. Type has to do with everything to do with printing presses. O sounds like Irish for, you know, Alan O'Dale, Alan of the Dale. O, it means of. And carry it's either a man's name, a woman's name. Uh, it means to pick something up and to move it along. Carry. A carryover means, you know, something that you didn't do today, so you're going to do it uh, to, in a future time. You're carrying it over. It's not a do-over. It means that you something that has been assigned to be done and you didn't get it done all today, so it has to be carried over to the next day and whenever you can ever catch up with it. Karyotyping is looking at the shape, the morphology, the morph has to do with forms. I Yesterday I was reviewing a little blurb on YouTube about Plato and his world of forms. And he said, ideal forms are ideal. And if you don't have the ideal friendship, there is a form for the ideal friendship. And if you haven't got it, you should still know that there is that thing. So it means there is an escape from hell. <laughs> Pink Floyd song is something to do. Can you really tell a difference between heaven and hell? Some commentator about Buddhism said Nirvana is samsara. In other words, the enlightened being lived, lives in the mundane world. I've got nothing but words for you because the ones that I'm interacting with in the simulated reality prompt me to do things. I'm supposed to get annoyed. They say my emotional reaction is up to me. At the beginning, when they were torturing me, I had responses, emotional reactions, like, you know, I'd give them the finger, buzz off. This never happened. And over time, you want to do something new acting for real life, and after a while, after you've gone through the usual emotional responses of anger, frustration, anger, frustration, reverse psychology, I'll love you despite the fact you're abusing me, after you've used up all these different kinds of emotional responses, then you try and use some logic, reason, you look for higher consciousness, lower consciousness, it's Somebody says, you're a punching bag and, you know, you're just a, uh, in the olden days, they used to have plastic blow up dolls and they were like weevils. I don't know if you remember weevils. They were a child's toy, the same kind of thing. They were weighted at the bottom and you would knock them, but they, they wouldn't fall over because they were weighted at the bottom and they had a rounded bottom. So they would just uh, kind of sway, but they'd come back up again, just like the plastic punching bag. And that's what I am, the plastic punching bag. They can keep hitting me, but I'll keep coming back. The nature of the reality game is looking for some novelty, but it's all pre-sent. So you're experiencing it. And if you're really in the moment, for a moment you might forget that it's all pre-sent pre-planned, pre-packaged, like a TV dinner for you to experience. Like it or not, it's your TV dinner. If you don't eat it, you'll go hungry. I was reading an article about the singer Brandon Boyd of the band Incubus. And he said when he'd been on the road doing touring for a long time, 
he felt like everything was, he was becoming an automaton. He was just becoming a robot because everything was happening. Was it flow, too much flow? Too much flow. In other words, we're going here, we're going there, we're going here, we're going there. And he felt like he had no input into the tour. He had become the tour. He had lost his sense of individuality and especially his sense of choice. He had just become, it's like, you know, you have a tape and it's the Brandon Boyd Incubus show. And the tape is, I mean, maybe minor variations, but it's pretty much the same tape day after day. The song by Bon Jovi about, is it dead or alive, where they tell the day of the week by the bottle that they drink. In other words, the, the contract that they have says, on Mondays we get Budweiser beer, on Tuesdays we get chocolate milk, and Wednesdays we get champagne, on Thursdays we get orange juice. And it keeps rotating every week. So Brandon Boyd said in his interview, I had the wish to end the tour because I didn't feel like I had anything but being used. I was being used. And I wanted something new. And I wanted the ability to choose something other than hey, you're on tour you're going to do the tour the tour the tour the tour the tour will be up in three months and then you can go back to writing in the studio or you could go off to the south of france because you're going to have lots of money it's delayed gratification is what they teach you in school this kind of nature you know why do you work for so many hours of overtime because then you'll be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor some money to spend as you wish or to pay off all the bills that you incurred. If you're Willie Nelson, he went on tour and he was working and working and working and he was always on tour. And lo and behold, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service of the United States said, you owe us back tax, back taxes. I'm getting a skip again, back, back taxes. That's, I don't know why, skip keeps coming around. And uh, Willie Nelson said, well, I don't have the money. And then the IRS said, well, do some concerts and give us all the money. So in other words, be our slave. We're the IRS. You're Willie Nelson. You can attract a huge number of people who will pay to see you. And whatever the gate is, in other words, the take from the ticket sales, everything, uh, give it to us. Because you're an American citizen, you were born in America, and you owe America. And we're America, the IRS. Well, he says, well, I, you know, I hired accountants. They were supposed to look after paying all these bills, the tax bills. IRS looks at him and say, it's your tax bill. Your accountant screwed up. Well, he says, well, you know, why don't you hold the accountants to account? They're professional accountants, certified by the government. You're the government. Shouldn't you hold the accountants accountable for this error? No, the IRS says, you're Willie Nelson. Your name is here. It says that you made this much money, which means after we apply our formula of whatever the percentage of tax is, uh, and we didn't get the check for that amount of money, so you owe us. Well, he says, what about the accountants? When are they ever going to pay for their mistakes, their corruption? IRS, you're corrupt. When are you going to pay for it? IRS and says, we're not corrupt. Well, he says, yes, you are. You're corrupt because you are canceling my ability to be Willie Nelson. You have turned me into a slave. My purpose is to produce money for you irs so you can give it to the president and the congress and the supreme court so they can administer me i never agreed to this i was born into it some other idiot would say before you came to planet earth you knew what it was like 
actually got a little clicking on that. And you agreed to this darkness so you could have the earth experience. Is it true? Do you believe the little beep? The point of the matter is you're in too deep and you can't get yourself out of the earth experience until it's over. And Steve Perry of Journey says, the movie never ends. It goes on and on and on. Eternal reincarnation. That's the depressing look at it. The pronoia look at it is the universe is always trying to give you something. I keep seeing it's like a fruit fly flying around. There's no fruit in my bedroom, just so you know. So I can come to the conclusion that no, it's not an illusion. It's a real thing. And I keep thinking these little fruit flies are dropping out of what's known as the etheric world, which is normally hidden to us. Dr. David R. Hawkins was talking in one of his lectures and he said, what happens if there's a fly buzzing around and you take a fly swatter and you swat it? He said the physical bug dies, but the etheric version of, of the, or the etheric double of that fly keeps flying around in the etheric realm. It's a double to this world. Somebody else said the etheric is where your form is held. The form is held. The form for what happens in the physical world is in the etheric. So things happen in the etheric and it's doubled here in the physical world. Who sets up the etheric world? Uh, higher realms, so, you know, the mental realm or the causal realm. There's all kinds of words, and, you know, you might be able to find a diagram, and you're supposed to go, oh, oh, nod your head, this is the way it is. Is that the way it really is? It's just what's given to you. Is it fact or fiction? I can't tell you. It's just a diagram that they say to sate your curiosity. How would you ever find out? How can you look at the etheric realm? Uh, you have to, I don't know, nothing, no words come. It's just given to you. This is the way it is, according to the model. Someone wants me to lie down. Let's recline. What is it about watching videos that makes you watch? Something to pass the time. Something to do. How do you improve your situation if you're in a movie and, you know, the movie is already pre-made and you're there? Well, you, if you don't like the movie, uh, you can get up out of your chair and get out. Get in your car and drive somewhere else. But the movie is not of that nature. It's like Piano Reeves and The Matrix. The truth of the matter is Keanu Reeves' body is in a pod and the body is hooked up by cables to computers that are feeding computer-generated images and feelings and thoughts into his body. So for all intents and purposes, Keanu Reeves has forgotten that he is in this pod. Someone says, well, maybe he was a test tube baby and he never got out of the test tube. How do you exit the matrix? Edgar Martinez keeps wanting to be phlegmatic. I never looked up the meaning of phlegmatic, and one time I did, but it's not given to me to remember. But he's phlegmatic, and at least he's acting that way. How do you exit the matrix? Or maybe it's this too will pass. In other words, the nasty part of the map, the map, 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 map. Ma the nasty part of the matrix ends. And, you know, that map, 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 map song is the sound of old-fashioned reel-to-reel tape recorder. And when it comes to the end of the tape, it spins around. It keeps spinning, but there's no more tension on the tape, so it spins too fast. And the end of the tape kind of flaps around.
The puzzle is how many more tapes are there that you must endure before you are freed from having to be in this pre-sent, pre-created reality that you experience. When can you get to what you were before this movie was created, the whole idea of movies for you to experience? What did you do before there were these movies, before you walked into this place that's trapped you? The Hotel California, you can never leave the Eagles.